Hi, you're listening to Asherity's Good Business Podcast. I'm Matt. In this show, we're talking to the leaders who are successfully making business better for the world, from eco-friendly changemakers to companies that give back to their people and communities in a big way. Today, we're branching off to the nonprofit sector and talking to one of the greenest organizations out there to learn how one of the world's best tools in the fight against climate change has been right in front of us the whole time. In case you haven't guessed, I won't leave you in the dark. We're talking about trees and bringing in one of their biggest advocates, Dan Morrow, Vice President of Partnerships at the Arbor Day Foundation. I'll cut out the puns and let Dan introduce himself. Well, thanks, Matt. Um, I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to talk about uh, large scale restoration efforts and all of the things that the Arbor Day Foundation is doing today. So my name is Dan Morrow. I am the Vice President of Partnerships here at the Arbor Day Foundation, and my primary responsibility is really leading the team that works directly with corporations to help bridge gaps between corporate sustainability goals and trees. And we do this in a wide variety of ways, uh, but it always starts with developing relationships and really kind of listening to what organizations are looking to, to do and how trees may uh, work to accomplish specific goals that they may have. You know, if trees are planted in a forest or in communities, you'd be surprised how often trees really do tie into corporate environmental initiatives. And I know we'll talk much more about that later. Uh, but I went to college uh, to study finance. So um, I do not have a forestry background. I do not have a tree planters background, if you will. And I really worked in banking and finance my entire career until I came over to Arbor Day uh, about seven years ago. And so I was recruited to come work there, um, and it was really great timing for me. I had recently become a father, and I was really searching for more meaning in my work. And um, I really stepped into the role at Arbor Day Foundation, and I was really inspired uh, more by mission-driven work than, let's say, profits or return to shareholders. Um, one thing, it was, it was kind of risky stepping out into uh, nonprofit work. But I did feel like if I was going to step into something like this, I wanted to work for an organization that was really mission driven and something that I could really be proud of. It wasn't only the Arbor Day Foundation's mission that drew Dan to the team. He's always had a passion for the natural world around him. And as a Nebraska native like a surety, he was no stranger to the Arbor Day Foundation and their work. Yeah, you know, growing up, I'm actually a Nebraska kid. And so Arbor Day has always been front and center for the state of Nebraska. I think many people, regardless of where you live or where you're from, can really be inspired by trees. And we have a very simple mission here at the Arbor Day Foundation. We inspire people to plant, nurture, and celebrate trees. And so as a kid growing up, I was always outside playing in trees, you know, climbing trees in my front yard. Um, I've been to several forests across the country, and I just felt like going to work for an organization that recognized the negative effects of climate change and how they could work to solve that uh, was really impactful for me, and it was something that I wanted to be a part of. You probably know Arbor Day from their large initiatives. You might have even helped with a few, and we'll get to those in a few minutes. But first, something you might not know. The Arbor Day Foundation works directly with for-profit companies to help them reach their sustainability goals, something Dan leads in his role as Vice President of Partnerships. I'll let him explain more. So we work with companies um, day in and day out to really seek to understand what sort of sustainability initiatives an organization may have. So there's very common corporate sustainability goals out there waste reduction, zero waste to landfill, lean manufacturing. But where we really step into is when organizations commit to environmental restoration through forestry or consider net zero emissions. Most organizations and, and hopefully our listeners understand that there is really no silver bullet and for climate change. Um, but organizations have recognized that they really can't afford to ignore nature-based solutions as an important component of our climate change mitigation plan and a corporation's uh, mitigation plan. One of the, the greatest aspects of trees and tree planting is reforestation really is a proven and cost-effective way to remove carbon from our atmosphere, to restore 
habitat for wildlife. Um, and it's really this efficient technology, cost-effective efficient technology that benefits people, wildlife, and the environment. We've all known for pretty much our whole lives that trees are good for the environment. That seems pretty obvious now. But I was curious about the large-scale tree planting efforts that we've seen in recent years. So I asked Dan about how long trees have been viewed as a solution to big global problems. Uh, I would say that companies have recognized tree planting and reforestation as a solution to climate issues for a very long time. We all are aware, you know, we grew up in biology class uh, in school growing up that trees sequester carbon, they um, absorb carbon dioxide, they emit oxygen, and they can really be a cost effective way for an organization's climate change or climate policy. I think the global momentum around trees has really taken off over the last couple of years. And a perfect example of this is um, the Trillion Trees Initiative. So in January of 2020, the World Economic Forum and its partners, along with the Arbor Day Foundation, launched 1T.org to really connect, empower, and like mobilize this global reforestation community. Um, they have a, set a goal to plant 1 trillion trees by 2030. And the reason for this really ambitious number is that studies have shown that planting 1 trillion trees could neutralize carbon dioxide emissions and will ultimately help slow the rising temperatures across the planet. No need to rewind. You heard that number right. 1 trillion trees by 2030. That's an almost incomprehensibly large number of trees, but the Arbor Day Foundation and its partners are on track to meet it. And it's not the only big initiative they've undertaken recently. In fact, you probably saw their hashtag Team Trees project in the news last year. Yeah, the Team Trees initiative really took uh, the planet by storm in the fall of uh, 2019. So the idea of Team Trees began uh, when two YouTube content creators by the names of Mr. Beast and Mark Rober accepted a challenge to plant 20 million trees globally in honor of Mr. Beast's 20 millionth subscriber. So somebody posed out to him, hey, you should plant trees. Um, and he accepted that challenge. So that challenge grew into one of the fastest growing environmental fundraising initiatives ever. And when it was all said and done, um, it ended as the largest crowdfunding effort in YouTube's history. So the goal of the initial launch was to raise $20 million by January 1st, 2020, and each dollar raised would plant a tree. And these trees would be planted on every continent around the world apart from Antarctica. And so hundreds of YouTube creators um, participated in the event. Social platforms were all over it. And we actually raised that goal of $20 million in 56 days. And right now, I believe that we're, we planted more than 22 million trees through that initiative and will continue to plant trees um, in the future. And one of the most amazing parts about trees is that they're universal. They can help to improve the environment just about anywhere on the planet. So part of the 20 million trees, as I mentioned earlier, will be planted on all continents apart from Antarctica. So we've planted those trees in North America, in the Mississippi Olivia Valley, like states of Arkansas, uh, Louisiana. We've planted trees in Canada, in British Columbia. California has been, been a big project of ours. Um, other countries across the globe include Nicaragua, uh, Africa. Uh, we've planted several hundred thousand trees in Madagascar. Um, and Asia as well. So we're working with, with groups in Indonesia, India, and China. Beyond hashtag Team Trees and 1T.org, the Arbor Day Foundation has led other globe-spanning initiatives, including one that brought bigger companies into the solution. So the most ambitious initiative that the Arbor Day Foundation has ever embarked on was the Time for Trees initiative. And we're currently in the Time for Trees initiative. And we've launched uh, this initiative in March of 2019. And we had two goals in mind, and that was to plant 100 million new trees and inspire 5 million tree planters by June of 2022. And June of 2022 is very important for us for a number of reasons, but that will be when the Arbor Day Foundation celebrates its 50th anniversary. And when we were talking about launching the Time for Trees initiative, and 
how individuals and corporations could get involved. When we considered what our goal should look like, we really thought long and hard about what could challenge us, challenge others, really inspire and continue to um, capitalize on this momentum of tree planters. And 100 million trees and 5 million tree planters was in effect a doubling of our work. So as we calculated what those numbers could be, we challenged each other to say, you know what, there's so much work that needs to be done. What if we challenged ourselves to double our work? And so as part of that initiative, one of the ways that we knew that we could drive investment to this work was through corporations. And so we formed a group called the Evergreen Alliance. And we knew that corporate leadership was going to be essential to helping us reach this goal. And so the Evergreen Alliance is really a select group of Arbor Day Foundation partners that are really committed to advancing trees and forests as a natural solution for corporate sustainability and citizenship goals. And we really challenge this community of leaders to help drive innovation discovery and action in our work to plant trees. And we asked them to challenge us to do that. We challenged them right back as well. Um, and we have some great corporate partners. There's currently 18 organizations that are members of the Evergreen Alliance. There's brands that uh, we all know, P&G, Verizon, Target, Hershey Chocolate, Bank of America, UPS, FedEx. Um, and it's this very committed group, as I mentioned earlier, that are really inspiring others to plant trees. The companies the Arbor Day Foundation has partnered with aren't just footing the bill either. They're actively working to help reach the tree planting goal and in many cases offsetting their own footprint in the process. So the Evergreen Alliance has been a, a catalyst for driving awareness, as you mentioned, to the Time for Trees initiative, but also planting. So part of this group is they have committed to the Arbor Day Foundation to supporting our efforts in tree planting across the globe. So this group of corporate partners is planting hundreds of thousands of trees across the globe. They're engaging their employees to get outside and plant trees. They're planting trees in communities. They're planting trees in forests. They're also working to understand what their carbon footprint is and considering verified emission reduction credits as part of their sustainability strategy. And they've really been at the forefront, not just to increase awareness of the campaign, but also to participate and do the work. Partnerships with the Arbor Day Foundation happen outside of large scale efforts too. Individual companies often approach Dan and his team for help reaching their sustainability goals, like this organization. So one of the organizations I'll talk about is actually a member of the Evergreen Alliance that I had previously spoken about. And this is a company called Church and Dwight. So they're a leading consumer goods company uh, that people probably recognize more under their brands of Arm & Hammer and OxyClean or some of their brands within their portfolio. But Church and Dwight's top sustainability goal is to achieve carbon neutrality by the end of 2025. And so they've been working with the Arbor Day Foundation since 2016 um, to partner with us to purchase verified credits to offset any carbon emissions that they can't reduce internally. So each organization's sustainability journey is a bit different, but one of the things that we, we encourage companies is to really understand and assess what their carbon footprint looks like. So companies, we we encourage companies to reduce emissions as much as possible internally, whether that's through, you know, manufacturing modification, uh, reduction in energy use, you know, high efficiency equipment. And then when it comes down to the amount of emissions that they can't reduce internally, we really encourage uh, the purchase of verified offsets through our reforestation program. Like Church and Dwight, Many of the companies that the Arbor Day Foundation works with are trying to reduce their carbon footprint and the emissions they create. The Arbor Day Foundation helps them to internally reduce as many emissions as possible, and then assists in offsetting what remains with tree planting. But with a solution as flexible as trees are, there are a variety of problems that the Arbor Day Foundation has been tasked with helping corporations to solve, like water quality in Florida. I think it's important to recognize that, that some of the challenge our work is looking to solve are, are, are huge global issues that we all you know, are, are trying to, to challenge each other to solve. And there's not a silver bullet to any of these um, 
issues. One of the issues that we work with companies is water. So everybody is interested in working with water and it's the basic essential of life. Um, and it's important that clean access to clean water is available to, to people all across the world. And so one of the organizations that we work with on specific water quantity goals is Publix. So like many companies, Publix wants to improve conditions, you know, just outside of their immediate scope um, and really look to improve shared watersheds where their you know, a portfolio of stores are located. And they came to us with a specific goal to restore these impaired and at-risk watersheds within its home state of Florida. So they knew, like, like many others, that more than 50% of Americans um, get their drinking water from U.S. forests. And so they knew that forests could be a solution to help fulfill their goals. And so we worked on restoration projects within their state of Florida, and we were able to provide science-based projections of the positive effects of these trees in their specific watersheds. We found that this really fit within their sustainability strategy because they were interested, again, in their immediate footprint uh, community efforts as well as forestry efforts um, so they could be positioned and show that they are environmentally responsible organization. And so the long-term effects of this particular project is really to restore these watersheds that were deemed impaired by the EPA. So removing them from impaired to improved um, within these watersheds. Emissions, water purification, that's not all. Trees can even help to restore habitat that's been lost to deforestation, climate change, or other ecological trauma. Habitat restoration is, is absolutely critical through trees. And so if you think about any forest restoration projects where um, you're planting trees, that tree is not only going to clean air, filter water, um, you know, mitigate heat, but it's also going to provide habitat for wildlife. So there are several projects that we work on I can think of one in particular in Michigan where we are helping to restore the habitat of the endangered Kirtland's warbler. And it's a species of bird um, that lives in a very particular type of tree and a very particular type of climate. And that's important for many organizations where we all play a part in helping restore habitat for these critically endangered species. And so that is one additional way to habitat restoration is um, is very critical um, to our planet in ways that the companies can really um, help participate in offsetting the negative effects of climate change. And with the number of places a tree can thrive, the Arbor Day Foundation isn't limited to rural planting. Urban initiatives are common as well. The Arbor Day Foundation plants trees at the right time in the right place with the right people. And that could be trees and forests as well as trees and communities. So we work with a wide network of local nonprofit partners that facilitate tree plantings in communities where people uh, call home. And one thing that our companies that we work with have really found um, critical to their engagement with their employees is really allowing their employees to participate in the work that they're doing. Target is a great example. They support tree planting initiatives all across the country. So whether that's community beautification, whether it is uh, planting fruit trees, whether it's planting shade trees, they allow their employees to come out and help facilitate and plant trees in their communities that they call home. What they have found is their employees really love giving back to the community. And it's not just showing up. It's actually showing up and putting on gloves and getting trees planted and really getting um, your hands dirty, for lack of a better word, and putting those trees. You know, urban trees are so vital because the majority of Americans live in an urban setting and access to green space can help, you know, reduce people's depression. It can help um filter air. So there's studies out there that show that urban forests um, reduce the prevalence of asthma in communities. And this is just one way that corporations can get out there and plant trees in their communities. A tree is unique too, compared to other investments that you can make in your community. People who help with the Arbor Day Foundation's tree plantings can see the results growing year after year and genuinely, noticeably improving their world. 
Yeah, and that's one thing that we have found uh, corporations really enjoy, Matt, is driving by those trees that they helped facilitate the planting on, really see them grow, watch them grow. Uh, many employees will bring their families out with them as well. So they'll be planting trees with their parents or their children. And it's really a community um, involved activity that they take a lot of pride in. So now we've talked about how the Arbor Day Foundation leverages its corporate partnerships not only to help companies manage their impact, but also to help improve the planet we all share. Time for the big question. What can other businesses, large or small, do to contribute to the Arbor Day Foundation's work or start making a difference on their own? You know, at its most basic form, businesses are really just a bunch of people. And I would encourage all listeners on here, you know, your company should really understand what your own impact is and, and really work to limit it. Some basic questions that you could consider is, you know, where does my water come from? Uh, how does our organization get power? How much do we know about our supply chain and scope three emissions? And I think part of, you know, being a good corporate citizen means being an informed citizen. And so once an organization understands their footprint, and maybe the listeners on here already do, I would explore how you can harness nature to address these issues because of all the co-benefits I mentioned. So clean air, clean water, soil stabilization, habitat restoration. Trees can really provide a lot of plus one benefits um, that many companies recognize and that they should really strive towards. One other way that I think organizations can really contribute to our work and other work is, as I had mentioned earlier, give your employees the opportunity to engage in their urban forests. Consider sponsoring a tree planting event. There is a need for trees in communities all across the globe. And so really consider how that could be part of your sustainability or corporate social responsibility strategy. Uh, organizations are always looking for volunteer opportunities. And so I encourage corporations to consider what an urban tree planting event in a community of importance to them could look like and really inspire and educate their employee base to not only um, learn more about trees, but actually get out and participate in some of the work. And I made sure to ask the question that our business owner listeners may be asking right now. Does the Arbor Day Foundation offer any resources for businesses to get started? Yes, absolutely. So that's part of what our team does each and every day. And so I would encourage listeners today uh, to feel free to visit our website. So if you go to www.arborday.org slash partnerships, you'll see um, some information about the work that we do, some case studies of how other companies are supporting our work. And if there are individuals interested in getting involved, there's a form on there where you can submit and fill out and a team member from ours will uh, reach back out to you. But we recognize that each business is really different. And so our team has always done well to really ask probing questions, understand where one is at on their sustainability journey and figure out if it is in alignment with the Arbor Day Foundation. If it's not, we work with a wide uh, variety of other NGOs that are out there that could support a business mission uh, and specific sustainability goals that we may not be able to address ourselves. Well, there you have it. If you're a business owner looking to make your organization a bit better, that's a great place to start. And whether or not you're a decision maker in your organization, we can all help out by planting a tree and taking care of the ones we already have. At the end of our episodes, we like to thank our guests by making a $100 donation to the charitable organization of their choice. Here's who Dan picked. Well, Matt, I know this probably will come as no surprise, and I'm completely biased in this particular question, but um, I would love to spotlight the Arbor Day Foundation and the work that we do. I would ask that all of your listeners uh, go to uh, timefortrees.org to learn more about the Time for Trees initiative that I had talked about. And one thing that I'll mention in addition to that is with this momentum of tree planters that has been happening all across the globe, um, we're actually exceeding our own plan. So we've already crossed off the 5 million tree planters engaged and we're approaching a nearly six and a half million tree planters engaged. And as far as the 100 million tree goes, um, we're actually a, a more than 70% there and we have nearly two years left. Uh, while I don't want to encourage and say, hey, this work is done, we know that our work is far from done. And once we cross this 100 million threshold, uh, we're just getting started. 
And we'll, we'll launch into something else because the, the critical importance of tree planting is so needed across the globe. Um, and we really take it to heart here that it's important that we have to be great stewards of our earth. And we really need to encourage others to do the same. So again, go to timefortrees.org and there's a donate now button if you'd like to learn more about our work. Like Dan mentioned earlier, if you want to find out more about what the Arbor Day Foundation is doing, you can visit them online at www.arborday.org. We'd like to thank Dan once again for his time today and for showing us how some of the most vital tools to nurture our planet have been all around us. Thanks for listening to Assurity's Good Business Podcast. Assurity's Good Business is a production of Assurity Life Insurance Company of Lincoln, Nebraska. If you have questions or comments, or you want to submit an episode topic or guest for us to interview, you can visit us online at www.assurity.com slash goodbusiness, or send us a note at goodbusiness at assurity.com. And if you like what you hear, subscribe and listen to the rest of our episodes wherever you get your podcasts. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram to stay up to date. Join us again next time for more stories about how businesses are changing the world. After all, it's good business. Assurity is a marketing name for the mutual holding company, Assurity Group Incorporated, and its subsidiaries. Those subsidiaries include, but are not limited to, Assurity Life Insurance Company and Assurity Life Insurance Company of New York.